Hello everybody, welcome to another video from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. 30 years and one day ago, the next episode of the second season of Star Trek The Next Generation premiered, it was called Where Silence Has Lease, and these are my honest opinions about it. It starts with something every good episode should start, pointless padding. Picard is worried. Why? Because Riker is training with Worf in the holodeck and we get to know something important about Mr. Worf. He is a dangerous psychopath who is willing to even attack his superior officer with a weapon. So fighting monsters isn't enough for him? Thankfully he doesn't behave like this later in the season. Riker is fighting a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle and Worf is fighting Skeletor. And of course they defeat them very quickly. The opening is pointless and stupid, so why is it in the episode? Was the episode too short? Thankfully the real episode starts soon when the Enterprise encounters something what Wesley and Data can describe only as a hole in space. Data says that he can't identify it, because no vessel has before encountered anything like that. Well, a pity that a century ago Captain Kirk's Enterprise has encountered a space amoeba, and they also described it as a hole in space. They fly closer, but actually much closer than they planned, because that thing uh, suddenly swallows them and they don't know how to get out. Dr. Pulhaski comes to bridge and we finally see that her behavior towards man and male androids has changed, right? Well, she is nice to her male colleagues, but immediately insults Data twice in a row. You know, she's not as nice as I remember her. They tried to return the way they came in, but it didn't work. They tried to use a beacon, but it didn't work either. They fly away from the beacon, but very soon they find it in front of them. Even though, according to their sensors, they fly in line and not in a circle, they soon encounter a ship so they hope that uh, they'll be able to finally get some answers, but instead of a friendly ship, they soon meet a Romulan ship which decloaks in front of them and starts to fire. Since they don't answer, the Enterprise is forced to fire back with a photon torpedo, and the Romulan ship explodes. Before they get a chance to process what happened, a second ship appears, but this time it's their sister ship, the USS Yamato. According to the sensors, the ship is alright, but there are no life signs. On the bridge, meanwhile, something strange happened to Wesley. He is now suddenly much older, black, and wears a red uniform. So I guess that everybody knows that in a horror story the black guy dies first. Just like everybody knows that in classic Star Trek the red shirt dies first. Now we have a horror type of a Star Trek story and we are introduced to a black guy in a red shirt who we have never seen before. And I bet he has just a few days till retirement, right? I am pretty sure he will be fine. Riker decides to beam with Worf to the Yamato, and they both plan to get beamed to the bridge. Instead, however, Riker materializes in a haunted mansion version of a ship's corridor, including spooky voices and screams. He then hears something what he thinks is Worf yelling, so he runs to him, only to get almost shot by Worf, who is running towards Riker because he thought he heard him yelling. Anyway, they enter what they think is the turbo lift, but instead of it, they appear suddenly on the bridge. And when they want to go back to the corridor, they appear on the bridge. Are there two bridges? 
Or is the structure of the ship constantly changing? Anyway, whatever is happening, it messes up with Worf's mind, and Riker has to calm him down. Why is Worf written like a psychopath in this episode? Worf and Riker can't suddenly communicate with the Enterprise, and Chief O'Brien can't lock them and beam them back. Meanwhile, the bridge gets an offer they can't refuse. An opening appears directly in front of them, so Picard has to do a moral decision. Will he leave the place with the ship to normal space and leave Riker and Worf behind? Nah, he of course doesn't. So they can suddenly beam them back, almost like somebody is playing with them and testing them. When Worf and Riker come back to the bridge, a different opening appears, but Picard tells Data to ignore it, and asks Deanna if she feels some presence, and together with her and Dr. Pulaski they realize that they are basically rats in a maze. Well, finally... And then, a pen-scrapping moment happens when we see the villain of this episode, a space cat. The strange creature is called Nagilum, and uh, it's indeed the scientist, and they are indeed rats in a maze. Nagilum starts to ask why are they all differently built. He accepts that Data is different because he's an android, but he doesn't understand why Dr. Pulaski is built differently. When he realizes that uh, these strange creatures have two genders and they need to, it to reproduce, he asks them to demonstrate it. I love it. Nagilum then decides that he wants to examine death. He then kills, guess who? The black guy in the red shirt. What a surprise. But then he tells to Picard that he needs more data about the thing they call death, which means that he will do some experiments and kill a third, or maybe even a half, of the crew of the Enterprise. Picard of course doesn't want to allow it, which means they have only one possible solution. The self-destruction of the ship in 20 minutes. As Pulaski says, maybe it was a bad idea to get transferred to this ship. Picard relaxes in his quarters when he gets a visit uh, from Troy, who protests the fact that uh, he has decided uh, to kill them. Then Data arrives and he has a very simple question. What will happen after you die? Well, that is an easy question, right? Picard tries to have a philosophical discussion, but he very soon realizes that both Data and Troy react strangely, when he asks the computer where they are located, they are both on the bridge. So yes, it was just Nagilum playing with them. Fake Data and fake Troy disappear, and it looks like the Enterprise is free, because they suddenly see stars. Everybody tells Picard to turn off the damn self-destruct sequence, but he refuses to do so and orders Wesley, who is back in the chair, to warp quickly away in a random direction. He waits for a while until he thinks that they are indeed out of the anomaly and then turns uh, it off only a few seconds before the self-destruction and Riker happily agrees. Well, what can I say? I love this episode. This is not a sentence you will hear from me very often when I talk about the second season of The Next Generation. People usually say that the first season of TNG sucks, but I personally think that season 2 is much worse. There, however, are a bunch of really great episodes, and I think this is one of them. A good Star Trek story, in my opinion, has to have several ingredients. For example, it should have drama, mystery, science, fiction, humor, philosophical discussions, action, exploration, and great visual effects, and this episode has all of it. The only negative I can say about this episode is the pointless opening scene. Did the producers think that it was too short, or was it too boring? 
so they thought they needed to add a scene of Worf fighting monsters. Worf also behaves like a psycho uh, during a huge part of the episode, and Wesley gets replaced by a man whose only reason for being in this episode is to get destroyed by the villain of this episode. I would prefer if this had no action at all. I mean, I like my Star Wars action-packed and fast-paced, and I like my Star Trek slow and atmospheric. But otherwise than that, I love this one. On my standard scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 10 is a masterpiece, and 5 is just average, I would give this episode 8 out of 10. I think it's almost perfect. But as always, these were just my opinions. Feel free to let me know what do you think about it. Did you love it, hate it, or think it was just average? Let me know what do you think down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see uh, differences between the DVD release and the Blu-ray release of this episode, you can check other videos on my channel, you should see some links on screen right now. Thank you very much for watching, and see you very soon, hopefully tomorrow. Bye.